India has the reputation of being a foot dragger when it comes to agreeing to free trade agreements. The reputation is somewhat deserving considering that India pulled out of the Giant Regional Comprehensive Partnership Agreement RCEP, the giant regional trading deal involving China, Japan, Australia, and ASEAN, and another bilateral deal involving India and the EU has floundered in negotiations. Given this track record, recent announcements from New Delhi to conclude free trade deals with the EU and Australia by the end of the year comes as a shock. The unseemly haste to seal the deal signal that something fundamental may be changing in India in terms of attitudes and approach toward free trade. The answer, given India's complexity, is both a yes and a no. Unlike its giant neighbour China, whose total goods trade volume alone surpassed $5 trillion last year, India is a minnow with goods trade in the $800 billion range. This number is expanding at a double-digit clip but is hampered by the fact that there is no natural constituency for free trade in the country. The country's political class are deeply skeptical about the merits of expanding trade links, with much of the thinking dating from the colonial era when unfettered imports from Britain devastated the domestic economy. More recently, India's large business houses are also keen to safeguard their interests by advocating for a slower pace of trade and investment liberalization. The travails of foreign firms attempting to access India's growing retail sector is indicative of this trend. However, the pandemic appears to have softened Indian government's attitudes on the merits of free trade. From a strategic economic perspective, India's absence in two of Asia's mega-regional trading arrangements, RCEP and the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPP, shuts it out from gaining preferential access from fast-growing markets. While India does have FTAs or Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreements with ASEAN, Japan, and Korea, New Delhi must worry about the implications of not being party to aggregated deals involving all of the parties listed above. This is where the relatively safe FTAs currently being negotiated with the UK and Australia should be viewed in context, 